Hey guys, Hardler Brief Dan here with another episode of the Unity Make an RPG series. Today we're going to continue working on the ability system. We're going to take a look at the area effect class that we worked on last time. Then we'll look at the damage over time class that I've created and we'll talk about how that's going to work. Uh, we'll compare the damage over time against the area effect class and then we'll start looking at status effects and talk about a few ways we can handle timers. So let's first look at the area effect class. Here we have our projectile cube. We have our sphere that we've set as a trigger. Uh, we talked about adjusting its radius to uh, make an area greater or smaller depending on what we want. Uh, one thing you can do if you want a custom collider, you can create a model in Unity or Blender, 3D Max, Maya, whatever your 3D modeling program is. And you can set it to have a mesh collider and then turn off the mesh renderer and you can create a custom collider if you want. Uh, something to think about if you want like a cone or a triangle, some other weird shape that Unity doesn't have. Uh, you can create that yourself. So now that we've done that, um, let's open up, let's look at the class first. This is our area effect class, and uh, we have our constructor here. We have our whole bunch of private variables to adjust the collider and how the area effect is effect, you know, how it performs. We have our override method called perform behavior where we add a game component, we set the radius and the trigger, we start a coroutine called AOE, which this is our private coroutine here where we start a timer and for the duration of the timer we apply damage as long as the AOE is uh, occupied and we check if it's occupied based on this on trigger enter and on trigger exit methods so the first thing I'd like to talk about is a great suggestion uh, which is why are we doing this add component here we could get rid of this if statement and add component and just say hey this thing requires a certain component we could say at the top above the class we could say requires component parentheses type of type of and then we can say a sphere collider right so this thing requires a sphere collider if we do that if you add this line of code at the top the only thing that we have to do is say sphere collider se is equal to this dot game object dot get component uh, sphere collider right so if we do that then we can actually comment out this block of code we don't need it because uh, we have we don't need to check if it has it because we were requiring the game object to have it therefore this will never evaluate and we'll never have to add the component but we still need to get an instance of the collider so that we can apply the radius and then set the trigger to true so that's one way to do it. I'm going to keep this line of code here. Excuse me. So uh, if you don't want to do this requires component, then you don't have to. Um, I'm not sure if this way's if this is faster or not. I'm just, I'm assuming requires component still runs the add component. Uh, we're probably saving some time because we're not checking the game object to see if it has it. Uh, but Unity might be checking it underneath the hood. I'm not really sure. So maybe if you know if requires component is faster than this if statement, let me know. Write it down in the comments below and we can uh, all benefit. And we can all learn something. So anyways, after we do that, we set the radius and we set the trigger to true. And then we start our coroutine called AOE. And we in our coroutine, we start our timer and we run for the duration of that timer. In the dura During that duration, we check to see if the AOE is occupied. If it is occupied, then we apply damage. Uh, and once we apply damage, then we wait a certain amount of time. Now this has brought up some questions, basically why am I doing this? Because uh, it kind of makes it act like a dot effect, and it really does, it makes it seem like a damage over time effect. Uh, the reason why I added that was one, because it allows us another variable we can adjust. Um, but really, this method here, this coroutine is going to run every single frame. So this while loop is going to try to evaluate and apply damage every single frame uh, that the game is running at for the duration of the timer meaning this thing is going to apply a ton of damage when you're in it so it's going to be very very fatal to whatever's in it for however long uh, and I wanted some more control over when I actually do apply the damage to uh, the enemy right or the object that's in the AOE so I've added this damage tick duration now this might not be a great name for it and again if you guys got a better name let me know in the comments below but I believe um, this gives me a lot more control and it makes the ability less punishing. So imagine you're playing a multiplayer game. You launch, someone launches an AOE effect at you, or you get in an AOE effect, and it applies damage to you. At that moment, you have a split second 
to change what you're doing and get out of it before you're punished again for being in it, right? Uh, and that's all that I'm doing here is I'm giving us that split. I'm giving the enemy, the player, the object a split second of time to get out of the AOE before damage is applied again. Hopefully that explains it. If not, I'll try it again. But let me know in the comments down below. Uh, here we stop the timer and we reset it um, uh, after the while true while loop is set to false, and then we stop the coroutine. So that's basically how uh, our area effect works. Now, I've already writ written the damage over time class, so I apologize uh, for that, but I'll go ahead and talk you through it and talk you about what I did. It's very similar to the area effect class. So in Unity, in our behaviors folder, I've added the damage over time script. So all I did is right click and then add create and create new C sharp script. And I labeled it damage over time. So here in Visual Studio, you see our damage over time class. It's inherited from ability behavior. Um, I've what I did is in area effect I've just copied the entire coroutine the perform behavior method the constructor and all the private variables I just copied it all and I pasted it in the damage over time class and then I went ahead and changed what I wanted so I changed the name to damage over time I changed the description to a dot or dot uh, and I set the start time to beginning I want this to happen at the beginning uh, we can set a variable later on to change this whenever we want something to think about. Uh, I got rid of the area because we don't have an area radius that we're affecting. Uh, but we have an effect duration and we have a, a, a duration timer. So make sure you add the using system.diagnostics library to the top of the script or the class. We also have a base effect damage and then we have a damage tick duration. Uh, and then in the constructor I've changed the name from area effect to damage over time. So all I did was copy damage over time and I pasted it here and what this constructor do it just builds the effect like we've been doing or the behavior and the override perform behavior method here uh, I've deleted everything that was an area effect so I got rid of the sphere collider nonsense I got rid of the radius and trigger stuff and we're just starting the effect right so we're just starting our coroutine which I've aptly named dot or dot so here we have our coroutine it's a private IE enumerator it's called dot uh, in the coroutine, I do duration timer dot start. It turns on our timer, and then we have a while loop that basically is the same thing as the other while loop, except we're not checking to see if it's occupied because this is going to be applied to something. It's going to stay on someone, so we're going to continually apply damage every so often, which is the damage tick duration. So every half second, we'll apply damage, uh, and then wait another half second. As soon as this evaluates to false we will stop our timer and we'll reset it and then we'll turn off our coroutine very very simple uh, and that brings me so once we got this done uh, I'll uh, let me pause you can pause it I'll stop it here you can pause and type this all out if you need to or copy and paste like I mentioned uh, here is all the script so that you guys see it in a moment before we move on uh, again I apologize for writing that in advance um, uh, but I, I got it done and I, I didn't think otherwise. But anyways, here's the damage over time effect uh, or ability behavior. I want to cr start creating another one, um, which we're going to do now. And we're going to call it basically a status effect. I, I kind of played around with the idea of creating a whole another type of effect or a whole another type of thing called a status effect that abilities and ability behaviors can have status effects. But... A status effect in itself is basically an ability behavior, right? A status effect, what I'm talking about, is like a slow effect, meaning we slow the player's movement. That still, to me, is an ability behavior. Um, so then I thought of, well, why don't we have ability behaviors? Why don't we give the option of ability behaviors having sub-abilities, right? Has a damage over time burn a, a, has a sub-ability of movement speed, right? It slows you down. It has the sub-ability of slow. Um, so that's what we're going to work on in this video and in the next video as well. So let's go into Unity. And under Behaviors, we're going to add a new behavior called Slow. Let's open that up. Reload all. Going to control us to save. And we'll start working on this, and then we'll probably end the video. Uh, but here, let's go to Area Effect. And I'm going to copy everything again. I'm going to copy the AOE, the coroutine, the override, the constructor and then all these variables 
So like that. I'm going to paste it. I'm going to paste it over top of that. I got rid of the start and stop method. We are now going to inherit from ability behavior. We're going to change the name to uh, slow. And we're going to change the description to slows objects moving speed. And we'll set this to end. We'll have our start time to be at the end. Um, so we don't want an area radius for this one. Uh, we might want to affect duration, so we'll keep that. We'll keep the using diagnostic. We'll add the using system diagnostics. We might want to stopwatch for this. Uh, I'm not totally sure yet. Uh, we don't have any base damage, so we'll get rid of base damage. Uh, we can get rid of this float then in the constructor because we don't need that. And we can get rid of base damage down there. In our constructor, we can get rid of area radius because we don't need that. We don't have is occupied. We'll get rid of that. Uh, and what are we missing now? AR, we get rid of that. So now we need to change area effect to slow. Like that. So here's our constructor for slow. We're just going to pass in effect duration. Um, we'll set ed equal to effect duration. Uh, and then we have our name and our description. Now, under perform behavior, we don't need any of that. We'll just delete it. We're going to be starting our coroutine, which we're going to call slow movement. And under slow movement, again, uh, I'm actually going to comment out this timer. I don't think we're going to use it. So we're going to, let's do that. Actually, no, we are going to be using the timer. Uh, excuse me. So uncomment that. So we'll have duration timer dot start. Uh, and we're going to be starting our timer for the same thing, elapsed total seconds. Uh, we're not going to have is occupied and we're not going to be damaging the player. But what, we'll, what we will be doing is finding the player or excuse me, finding the object. So we'll need some sort of target, right? Finding the object. Uh, and then once we find the tar object, we want to get its movement, get movement speed, or get movement uh, variable. So we'll say get movement variable and then apply a percentage slow. So that percentage slow will be applied. Um, we'll actually apply it outside of the, we'll apply it here. And actually, we won't use a timer. What we can do is we'll use, let's get rid of our timer. And, and I'm sorry I keep changing this up, but I'm coding it all on the fly. I'm kind of thinking about it as I go. And as we get it done, we'll kind of talk about how it's going to work. Uh, but basically, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the stopwatch. And we're going to use our effect duration. And what we'll do is we'll find our game object, we'll get our movement speed variable, and we'll apply a percentage to it to slow it to slow that speed down. And then we'll do a yield return new wait for second. Nope. Wait for seconds. And this is going to be our effect duration. Once we wait that amount of time, then we're going to go ahead and set. Um, re or reset move objects movement speed right so let me go ahead and run this through um, and then we'll talk about a few things we need to add uh, so basically here we have effect duration and um, we don't need damage tick duration so we just have effect duration the effect duration for slow is going to be how long the effect lasts so once we apply the effect, we're going to perform the behavior. We're going to start the coroutine, and inside the coroutine, the first thing we're going to do is find the object. We're going to get its movement variable. We're going to apply some sort of percentage to it that slows it down. Then we're going to wait, and we're going to wait the amount of time that is effect duration. So if it's 20 seconds, that's how long we'll wait. Once we wait that amount of time, that means the player's going to be slow for that amount of time. Then we'll reset the player's movement, the object's movement speed, and then we'll quit the... Uh, ability behavior. So not only do we have effect duration, we also need another private variable that's going to be a float and we're going to say slow percent. And we're going to add that to our constructor. We'll say it's going to take a float 
and we'll say slow SP for slow percent. We'll set slow percent equal to SP. And here where we apply uh, percentage slow to uh, apply percentage slow to it uh, to movement var. That will be where we apply the slow percent variable. Uh, which brings me up to this perform behavior. We actually want to be passing in the player object or the movement object, uh, which we haven't created yet. So that's something that we're going to have to talk about. So let's go into our ability behaviors class. And above our pro public virtual void perform behavior, I'm going to create a comment here. And I'm just going to say we need to be passing in the object and not the position. We don't want a vector 3, we want the object itself and then we want a game object basically. Uh, we want a game object which is our target. Right? Uh, and then once we get that game object then we can get its position and we can get the components that we need on that game object. So uh, let's actually change that from a vector 3 to a game object and we'll say uh, object uh, object hit and what's gonna happen is we're gonna get a whole bunch of errors now because we are using a vector 3 in almost every other situation uh, so let's go ahead and copy this and let's change it in our classes so an area effect instead of start position we'll use uh, the game object object hit in our damage over time, we'll change our start again. We'll change that to game object object hit, and then in our slow, we'll do the same thing. So let's get rid of object start position. We'll do object hit, um, and then we'll kind of work with this a little bit, and then we'll end the video. So here we've already found the object, so we can get rid of it. We can get rid of that comment. What we need to do though is to do a check. We can say if object hit. Oh, actually, we need to be passing it into our coroutine. So here we'll say uh, same thing requires a our coroutine. Oh, our coroutine is now going to require a game object called object hit. So we'll pass it in there like that. And what we'll do is we'll check to see if object hit has some sort of movement script. So we can do if object hit dot get component. And we'll say, we're just going to call it movement. We're going to comment this out. Basically, if we have movement, if this does not equal, if this does not equal to null, then we'll evaluate it and we'll get our movement variable. Uh, we'll get the movement variable and we'll apply the percentage to it. So we haven't written this bit of code yet. We haven't written the object hit and the get component movement. We haven't written any of that yet. Uh, but that's basically the idea. So if you have a movement script, uh, and you have a movement speed on it, that's a variable that you're going to want, and then you'll apply the percentage to it here, and it'll wait for a certain amount of time, and then it'll reapply it, and then we'll be done. So that's how slow movement is going to work. Uh, we're definitely going to have to come back and add a little bit more to this because it's not going to work right out of the box, but we haven't written all of the code that we need yet. I'm going to end the video here. In the next video, we're going to start working more on a little bit more status effects, and then we're going to eventually create the fireball spell ability with all these ability behaviors. Um, and then we're going to make a physical game object in the world and show you how it all works together. So please like, subscribe, and comment. Uh, you can leave down in the comments below what you think about the slow, anything really, any, ask any questions. Hopefully I can answer it or maybe another viewer can answer it. And I'll talk to you guys next time.